Hello there. My name is Justin, but all of my imaginary friends call me Porky of the Pine. My name is Brian, also known by my handle of 33YN2. Welcome to Pine Talk. This is an episode that we are recording live in the Discord server in the Live Talk channel. I think. Live Talk, Pine Talk. I don't know. Um, there are people who are getting to listen to us behind the scenes and having a really good time, as far as I can tell. So, this is different for us. We're having a good time. Again, I hope they're having a good time. But, they're looking at us uh, funny, so we're just imagining that they're wearing their underwear. I know they're wearing their underwear. They're, it's uh, it's just like an online class kind of thing. You're, you're in an online meeting. You don't have your camera on. Just, yeah. But anyway... Let's get into the rapid fire news. Nemo Mobile version 0.7.0 has released where they have updated their package manager. They have improved the weather application. It is called Glacier Weather and they're using Open Weather Map for their weather information. Voice calls have made progress where it has, it's not perfect yet, but it is getting there. SMS messages are working with some tinkering. It seems that you might have to restart some services every now and then. But for the most part, SMS messages are in fact working on it. And there have been various small UI changes in the home and lock screen. Fosh 0.14.1 has released. This mainly features phone call avatars and the ability to send DTMF tones during phone calls while on your lock screen. There is now a run command prompt. You can access that by pressing Alt F2. There are convergence improvements and there have been many small bug fixes. Plasma Mobile 21.12 has released. This features the much anticipated switch to Moto Manager, there have been major shell improvements and app improvements. Milo, the father of SXMO, is back again with something even more minimal. It is called Frame Buffer Phone, and this is a UI that is completely frame buffer based. So there is a graphical frame buffer UI and scripts, which would be similar to SXMO, where they have the SXMO UI and then SXMO UI utils. Glowdroid 0.7.0 has released. This primarily is bringing Android 12 to the Pine Phone. Chatty 0.5.0 Beta 4 has released with MMS improvements. The Matrix client Fluffy Chat has released versions 1.0 and 1.1.0 in the past month. Dank 12 of Hong Tram Linux fame, just yesterday as of recording, showed off Arch Arm using LXDE on the PinePhone Pro, and while it's not flawless, it is running extremely well. And the MNT Reform laptop is getting an adapter board for the Pine64 SoQuartz module, making this unique machine much more powerful and efficient. Malware was shared in the Pine64 chats disguised as a snake game, which specifically targeted the Pine phone, although it did require root permissions to run. An investigation has been launched into the matter by Pine64, however it is advised that you be cautious when installing unknown software. In conjunction with launching the investigation, Pine64 has removed the Valmer from the chat and banned the responsible user. They have also increased security on the forum and wiki, including more stringent file upload rules to prevent this from happening in the future. And they've ensured the community was well aware of the incident. The PinePhone Pro will be available next month alongside the keyboard add-on. It seems the weight is down to the factory needing a method of doing QA on the hardware to ensure full functionality. The modem is now fully functional, USB, data, and video output is now functional as well, and audio f is now functional. That said, there are some power management software issues that need to be resolved. For example, the phone battery will slowly decline and show the incorrect percentage, even though it still has full charge. Some more good news is that the front camera on the PinePhone Pro has been upgraded to an 8 megapixel sensor from the original 5 megapixel one. There was also an interesting demonstration of GameCube games running smoothly on the PinePhone Pro on the Pine64 YouTube channel. Shortly after this, we began talking about a second piece of malware. Here's Thanos to cover that. Yeah, so the first malware was a snake game, with, and the second one was a program called WL Sunset that was advertised as allowing you to change the gamma value for a WL Roots-based compositor, like the one used by Fosh. And both of these programs were Trojans that, when installed, had, would deliver a payload using a post-install script that would activate, I believe, at 2000 on a Wednesday, which delivers a payload called QMF Brick, which uh, 
it essentially wipes the firmware off of your modem. Uh, yeah, there was a uh, deactivator script that someone made that would uh, essentially just kill off the task that was scheduled to brick your phone. But how would it wipe the modem? Uh, I believe it uses an AT command to gain access to a shell on it, and then just pretty much rm-rf slash the whole thing. That would do it. But yeah, it it's not completely unrecoverable if that exploit does kill your modem. It's just a, quite difficult since you have to physically open it and then bridge some contacts on the mainboard. The following will be similar to the section you just heard, answering questions from the audience. It'll be a little disorganized, a little out of order, but for the most part, you should be able to make out everything. Thanks. Spaghetti asks, do you know if there is KDE Connect for the Pine phone, the mobile side, not the desktop software? And as a matter of fact, because this is mobile Linux, the same desktop software would run on your phone as it would on your desktop. So you can actually just run the desktop version of KDE Connect, and it will fit this display, and it will work just the same. Now, it doesn't work quite uh, 100%, unfortunately. Uh, it's not integrated into Plasma Mobile's like dialer, for example. And I believe the other thing is that the uh, mouse control where you drag your mouse, your, your finger on the screen to act as a mouse pad, that doesn't work either. And there might be like one or two other small features. But what does work is the media controls. Um, notifications, I believe, work fine. Uh, file transfers work fine. I've done those a couple times now. And... Uh, the find your device uh, pings as well. So it's it's still sort of useful. Um, hopefully they get the SMS uh, system working so that way you can send text messages through your KDE Connect app on your Pine phone and be integrated with your desktop. Yeah, the file system exposed works. Well, at least I know that you can send files between the devices. I don't know about the whole, ex like exposing the whole file system at once. I just know that sending one file between two devices does work fine. Yeah, this is def this one was definitely more like an announce, uh, you know, a, a radio talk show slash announcement show. Um, the we we always had the idea of like it being more of like a like you know pine talk. So here's what it originally was supposed to be when we first did the second season. It was supposed to be pine talk, and then pine talk for what it's worth. Pine talk was going to be the news segment, and it would just be talking about news related stuff like you know Plasma Mobile just released a new release of you know it, it was apps, it was going to be the rapid so, fire. But for the entire thing. Yeah. Yeah. It would be talking about all the things, you know, it, it, obviously rapid fire just does a quick, like this just released this month and then that's it. But we were going to do like, this just released this month. Uh, this will include this, 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 that, that blah, 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 blah. This is how it will go. It will be releasing on this date. And then we'd be moving on to the next thing, obviously. And it would just be all news basically. Uh, for what it's worth would be discussion talking about like, so what do you think about this? Um, and then also inviting people on to talk, you know, um, like, hey, Martin, so what's the plans for post-market OS, uh, you know, in five years? When are they going to press the red button to blow up all the devices that run it? You know, you just ask them, you know, crazy things and ask for opinions and what the stories about things are. And um, they're going to press the red button. <laughs> world domination. <laughs> So yeah, that was the original plan. Unfortunately, that changed. Uh, we were just doing one show. It's just the two of us plus Zed who does the editing. So it, and, and we do have a busy schedule, so it's a lot like every month to do that um, because the, it might sound like it does. It might not sound like a lot, but even just this like you know fifteen twenty minutes takes like an hour and thirty minutes or two hours to record and prepare and all that. And then on top of that, uh, he still has to edit it. So it takes him like a week to get well. It doesn't take him a week, but it takes him like two or three days, and uh, he has to space it out throughout a week because he has work and everything else going on in his life. So, so just to clarify, there, I it does not take me a week. It takes maybe uh, just south of like eight-ish hours or so, all told, where I have to go through each of the individual portions. But uh, it's also important to note that I also work in IT. So by the time I'm off of work, my brain is basically fried. So I fit this in where I can, but uh, it definitely doesn't take me a full week to, to get it done. I just have to space it out for my own sanity. Um, all that said and done, we only have one episode going on. And we're trying to kind of incorporate discussion bits like the for what it's worth would have been, but also focus on the news. That's the main thing is, you know, whenever there's the blog post, we take the information from the blog post. We take ever whatever little bits we had, like uh, I don't know. For example, I I stalk Ma Mastodon. Um, I stalk Mastodon and look for interesting stuff that's been on there. And you know, he Porky also stalks like XMO and whatnot. 
and then we just combine it all, throw it together into you know the uh, document, and uh, we talk. We pine talk. <laughs> um. Yeah, and so we have we were kind of. You can tell the difference between the our very first episode and then our then the second episode. You can see how we went from very robotic to suddenly we actually had personalities and a big part of that was going from having two shows to then just having just the one show and we what we both wanted out of pine talk was primarily news or it's something you can kind of listen to on <laughs> yeah we what we wanted was more folk or we wanted a news focus and because we wanted it to be something we can listen to the background and just see what we were talking or what has happened in the past month or uh, what has happened recently um which Jork actually did give a, bring a mention a good point with uh talking a little bit about history too so you can talk about or me and brian can actually talk about the progression of a certain program or something at some point just to kind of give a background um because sometimes it's you know, people are tuning into the podcast for the first time they just discovered pine 64 and we're talking about uh meepo which they have no idea what Meepo is, that sort of thing. Um, which I don't expect too many people to know about Meepo. It's a minimalist GPS software. But, uh... Well, I think in the morning, or not in the morning, sorry, I had a brain fart there. I think next month uh, we should definitely have another P- Pine Talk uh, doing it, you know, about discussion focused. And uh, we could talk about the evolution of humanity and how uh, it went from, you know, bacteria swimming in a river to all the way up to modern day i think that would be great don't you think porky uh yes <laughs> and we can we can fit that all into the pine 64 story somehow I, i'm sure it's there somewhere jack says this better because my microphone has stereo and was rotated but i record mono so it's okay i swear um yeah doric doric has something going on here he says uh, pine trees to pine cones to pine phones yeah yeah exactly mining pine trees and pulling out a pine phone that'd be great yes pine podcast should be mono uh it's just my the i don't know if it rotates or my microphone my cable's not long enough is what i'm saying um but i do record in, in mono don't worry martin um yeah <laughs> we should record on a pine phone one day no i'm ready well, PinePhone Pro, maybe it might have better speakers. So oh, yeah. Wait until that. Uh, I do want to uh, point out that at my work, they installed office phones in a lot of people's offices, including mine. And the, um, yeah, they installed office phones, and I was listening, or uh, I had a phone call, and I realized the call quality is better on the PinePhone than it was on this brand new office phone. <laughs> It's and, not very surprising. And with to me. with how much my coworkers make fun of me for using a Pine phone, I had a good time telling them that the call quality was considerably worse on that phone than the Pine phone. Well, Doric says that's awesome. What I want to hear wanting to buy a Pine phone Pro. The Doric, the thing is with the Pine phone Pro is that even when it comes on sale next month, it's probably not going to be ready for use. The uh, especially I, I mentioned it in the podcast, but especially with regards to power management. Um, when I said that the battery levels bounce around, I actually mean it like, as in you charge it up to a hundred percent, it will start ticking down, even though it's still at a full charge. And then even after you turn it off, actually, uh, from what I understand, it will still lose power because the software for it needs to be figured out still. Um, so yeah. And also suspend does not work right now. Um, it won't wake up from suspend. It will go into sleep, but it won't wake up. So that's a problem still. Um, and then also they need to get cameras working. GPS is still a problem. Um, you know, location is important nowadays. So, but other than that, it is in good shape. And that's honestly very few problems compared to what Braveheart faced when it, like with Braveheart, everything needed to be figured out. But with this, like the hardware is already pretty much figured out. It's just down to the sub components, like, you know, uh, you know, the GPS to the, uh, the, the power management chip and whatnot. I even remember getting the, because I got a Postmarket OS edition, and I remember I got it and I was excited. I knew it wasn't going to be, 
yes, Martin, Post Parker to West is the best uh, distro. Don't at me. <laughs> um, but uh, I was excited to use it, and I, I knew it wasn't going to be like super daily drivable, but I was going to try it anyway. And it was before Meggy released his kernel with the fix for call quality. And so I tried making a phone call, and I couldn't hear the person on the other end. They couldn't hear me. It was awful. And I, was, I pulled the SIM card out, and I was like, it's not happening yet. And then two months later, I put the SIM card in, and I haven't taken it out. I, mean, I, I swap every now and then, but um, it's mostly out of necessity for uh, various things. But more often than not, my SIM card is in my Pine phone. And also, I switched to SXML. I was, I was using Plasma initially. Or not Plasma, uh, Fosh. And I hate Fosh. Yeah, and hate also, out. thanks for the voice over LTE uh, being figured out by Martin here. That, that was a huge step forward for the Pine phone. Yes, I... He figured out the configurations for that. I, and I do want to mention that because, yeah, Yaki Yam, you said HDVO LTE on uh, T-Mobile. That's exactly what I'm using. I'm on T-Mobile, so it's using the HDVO LTE. Well, the modem does most of the work. Yeah, but the modem might do most of the work, but then without your shoving it to do its shit, then it didn't, you know, work. Let us praise you. So I'm curious, what would you guys choose if you had the choice? A, a newer Pine phone? like a pine phone 2 which would be low end obviously because it's just a newer generation of the low end pine phone that we have now or would you go for a pine phone pro yeah pine time pro win obviously obviously we don't know any details of what the the pine phone 2 would be but and we don't know when it will come but what would you choose if the choice was there i'm curious but that's about all that we have if you have any comments on what we talked about uh, or any suggestions, you can leave a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment there. If you are watching or listening somewhere else, you can comment or leave a suggestion in the Pine Talk podcast channel on the Discord server. The Discord link is discord.gg slash pine64. Um, Brian, do you have anything? You can also send us an email as well. Hello, geez, it is me. The renowned actor and voice actor James Earl Jones. Please send us an email to Pine Talk at Pine64.org. Thanks. Alright, if you have nothing else, till next time.